Have you ever noticed your older cat suddenly acting a bit more spry and energetic, eating more, yet losing weight? Well, this presentation is not too uncommon. And high on the list of possibilities is an endocrine disorder known as hyperthyroidism. Whereas the most common thyroid disorder in a dog is hypothyroidism, or a low-functioning thyroid, in the cat, it is a high-functioning thyroid. And what is so unique to this feline condition is that the underlying problem is that of a benign functional thyroid adenoma, meaning the overgrown overactive thyroid tissue is not a malignant thyroid cancer like the one that might affect a dog, and the remaining gland itself remains totally normal. The typical affected cat is usually on the older side, often over 10 years of age. In fact, one of my first cases in practice was a 17-year-old cat. These cats are usually a little overactive, are eating well but are thin, may have dry coats, faster than normal heart rates, and often have what we call palpable thyroid glands in the neck. Laboratory work will often reveal elevated liver enzymes and increased thyroid hormone levels. There are a number of different thyroid blood tests that are typically run, and most senior feline blood panels include all of them, but the one that many of us find the most specific is called the free T4 by equilibrium dialysis, since it seems to be the most specific and less affected by other aspects of the cat's physical state. Since other old cat diseases can have similar presentations, the blood test is so important to make an accurate diagnosis. Also, since this condition does seem to affect older cats, a complete senior physical exam, including x-rays and an ECG, should be a part of the minimum database, both for diagnosis and to assess pre-treatment overall health. If the blood test seems to support the diagnosis of hyperthyroidism and everything else checks out okay, the next step is to consider a thyroid scan to confirm the diagnosis. The scan may not always be necessary, but is recommended, especially if the option using radioactive iodine will be chosen. There are a few treatment options available, though one using a radioactive iodine treatment seems to be emerging as a new favorite. This is the method used to treat people with the same condition, and what is so nice about it is that it's fairly non-invasive, destroys only that portion of the gland that is abnormal, and because the normal tissue remains untouched and functional, post-treatment thyroid supplements are rarely needed. The downside is the fact that the treatment can be fairly costly at first, but in the long run, with very little post-treatment care needed, does seem to balance out and may be best for the cat. Also, the treated cats often need to stay at the radiation facility for a few days during and after treatment. And lastly, this option is not readily available in many parts of the country. The next method, surgical removal of the affected gland or glands, is still a very viable option and probably the best one in areas where treatment with radioactive iodine is unavailable. With surgery, in the case of bilateral disease, these cats will need a thyroid supplement for the rest of their lives. Also, it's often difficult to preserve the tiny parathyroid glands which lie within the thyroid capsule. So if these are destroyed or removed, keep in mind that the cat will also need a supplement to help regulate calcium and phosphorus balance as well. And of course, surgery requires anesthesia, often on a compromised cat. So if you have options, one needs to consider those risks as well. Lastly, for extremely old or infirm cats, or if the other options are not affordable, an oral or topical medication called methimazole can be used to help combat the effects of the increased thyroid hormone on the body. Though this treatment doesn't get to the root of the problem, it can help with the symptoms, is very affordable, and is therefore still commonly used to treat many a hyperthyroid cat. Even with successful treatment, these cats need to be monitored closely. With the return to a euthyroid or a normal thyroid status, other conditions, such as weakened kidneys, which may have been masked by the increased blood flow during the hyperthyroid state, may now begin to elicit symptoms of disease. Should you have any questions or concerns, make sure to see your veterinarian. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Dr. Jeff Werber.